All right, let's get ready to get yelled at for doing this one. Okay, so all three of them are out. Initially, somebody asked if I would do this with including Deadpool, and it, it's really tough to get it to, to work well without it being really bizarre. You can already tell that the, the logos are and the, the pictures are, are kind of squashed. Now, again, the majority of this course is my opinion. If you disagree with it, that's why there's a comment section. Be respectful, no profanities. To, to the best of your ability, I'm well aware that this is the age of the internet where the use of ramp profanities is considered to be pretty cool. So let's let's get rolling with this. Now you see my criteria along the side. I'm looking at, of course, the, the male leads. How well do the male leads interact? How good is overall acting? How was their range? Special effects. This also includes costumes. Female lead, this is your principal female characters, villains, self-explanatory. Supporting cast, everyone who doesn't fall under a true direct lead. Story is just the basic overall flow of the story. <clears throat> money, how much money to make, music, which might make better music, and close to comic, again, is how close was it to an actual comic story. So we'll hop right into this. <clears throat> so, male lead. I'm looking at Ben Affleck and uh, Henry Cable, Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., I probably say for your male leads for X-Men Apocalypse, it's James McAvoy and uh, Michael Fassbender. I think Ben Affleck did a solid job as Batman. Could he have done a better job? Yes. Could he have done a worse job? Yes. His Bruce Wayne felt like an older, lived-in character, and he used that character from, from a different aspect. He actually used that to help get the information from Lex Luthor. And his Batman was okay for a first outing. Henry Cable is an okay Batman. An okay Superman, sorry. He's brooding, dark, not bad. So, Chris Evans, great Captain America. Robert Downey Jr., fantastic Iron Man. James McAvoy, just, he kills it as Professor X. And Michael Fassbender is just an amazing Magneto, so I'm gonna go with X Men Apocalypse for my <clears throat> for my male leads, principally because Robert Downey Jr.'s character, his Iron Man is great when it comes to one-liners and the, the snappy dialogue. But when it comes to dramatic moments, it, I just don't feel it as much. When he's confronted by that woman who's like, "You know, my son died," and he's like, "Okay." And, but that's the moment that pushes him over to make his change to, to essentially join the, the side that's for the superhero superhero registration. And then when he finds, like, okay, you know what? Your friend, Bucky, brainwashed, get it, we've been being played. And then when he has that moment of giving in to his rage to want to kill Bucky and Captain America simultaneously, it's, it feels big, but it's lacking all that gravitas. Huge spoiler for X-Men Apocalypse. <clears throat> There's an opening scene with Michael Fassbender when he's trying to no longer be Magneto. Things go sideways. And he gives in to his rage in a moment that... My wife, other my wife, is actually crying. Because it was that strong. His performance was that good. And his character joins Apocalypse because he's fully given into his rage and given about all hope, love, peace, joy, compassion... And he's fully intent on ripping the world apart. And it's not until he's finally convinced you, know, you do have friends, you do have family, and he finally, you know, turns turns back. And that performance is just amazing. James Mack avoids Professor X. He's got moments where he's kind of flustered, and he plays him off awkward, like you should for a character of his type. But then when it's time for him to make him that, that cool, confident leader, he's there. And there are just some really, really great character moments that don't exist as much in Captain America Civil War. Uh, in a similar vein, I'm kind of comparing two dramas with action to an action film with comedy. Special effects. I've already mentioned before, when it comes to Superman versus Batman, I'm not a fan of everything we've done at night. I know you do it that way because it's cheaper to do because you can skip certain things like, like uh, shadow effects and lighting effects. You can skip certain things. So it allows you to do things in a little bit more 
you well, it's like when you look at art. Some some artists will leave a section blank. This is comic book world, and then the inker will put in a lot of ink in that area, so you work a lot of shadow. It's a very interesting technique, but also means that the penciler didn't put anything in there because they used the shadow to make the job a little bit easier. It's like well. If I do the shadow of a building coming through, I cannot draw this portion of the panel. It's a brilliant technique because it works well and it also allows you to get a higher page rate. So with Captain America Civil War, that battle sequence during the middle of the day at the airport is it's a great fight sequence. Now I'm comparing that versus the fight sequence for X-Men Apocalypse. Multiple fights went on simultaneously. Multiple special effects went on simultaneously in a ruined location. So I have people flying, lightning, wind, optic eye blasts, a person who's tearing apart the earth magnetically, a speedster, someone who can shape change, telekinetic individuals, telepathy going on, people teleporting, person flying, shooting metal wing buffets. And, and the design of the Apocalypse suit is just probably the best you could do given the reference frame. And the special deck early on in the film is just fantastic. Female lead. Well, I've got Amy Adams, Gal Gadot, Elizabeth Olsen, Scarlett Johansson. Those groups versus, depending on how you want to look at it, Either it's based on the girl played Jean Grey, but she did a really good job. Or Jennifer Lawrence and uh, Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne. And you know, out of those three films, sorry, Jennifer Lawrence is Mystique. They used her so much as a figurehead. Why? Who did Storm have a picture of? It was Mystique. When it came time to get the team to galvanize, it was because Mystique showed up. They've put a lot into that character. It's like, she's the figurehead. She's the figurehead. And when it comes time to defeat Apocalypse, it's not just some guys. The ending battle of Superman versus Batman is two man and a woman versus a monster. The ending fight sequence, and the most pillow fight sequence in... Civil War is three guns. X-Men Apocalypse, you've got Psylocke, Storm, Jean Grey, Mystique. You've got four women directly involved in this battle. All the important parts to play. Olivia Munn's part isn't as crucial. I'm a Psylocke fan. It could have been a lot bigger. But her role was, it was done well. For what she was given, she did well. Jennifer Lawrence, she hates being in the makeup, so they spent half the film her not in the makeup. But she had pivotal roles that actually played very, very important parts in the film. Scarlett Johansson? No. Elizabeth Olsen? Kind of. In fact, she helped neutralize Vision. Gal Gadot? Super, super instrumental in that battle against Doomsday. And find out the information which led Batman to give, gather, gather more information from the Lex Luthor in, in the tapes. So, definitely, female characters front and center in X-Men. Ironically, going back to the first X-Men film, they had a team with two women. Two women, who both played pivotal roles in that any fight sequence as well. How did, how did Wolverine get up there? Well, it was a combination of Storm, Toss Mother of the Wind, Jean Grey directed him. Was that final shot delivered? To, to the machine. It was Jean Grey controlling the optic visor, Cyclops doing it. So you had women working in conjunction with their male counterparts to develop to give the victory. As much as people want to talk about how great Marvel is going to be because they might eventually do a film with a female lead, X-Men did it decades ago. Villains. All right, we got, I got a horrible Lex Luthor a pretty solid doomsday versus 
Crossbones, who tremendous waste of character. Baron Helmut, who had very little screen time and just played the, the general behind the scenes. Or Apocalypse, who from the start of the film is a very strong presence and is trying to destroy the Earth. First, by launching the weapons into space. Being like, well, you have no weapons now, humans. My goal is to just plan apart. Only the strong will survive. And that is a strong presence. And with the way he was done by teleporting and Gene Jean and Gene and matter manipulation, that was tremendous. Sorry. He's He's the first big screen villain to have that. It's going to take a team and a miracle to take him down. In fact, that he had to be fought on two independent planes simultaneously to be beaten. I will probably say the next person to come close to that level of power is going to be Thanos. Or on a supporting cast. You know, I feel this one to Captain America Civil War. The supporting cast of America vs. Batman. They're there. Jeremy Irons did a great job. Lawrence Fishman does a great job. But, you know, they're, they're, they're okay. The supporting cast when it comes to X-Men Apocalypse. The guy who played Cyclops, he was okay. Like I mentioned before, Olivia Munn could have had a, a better, more substantial role. Caliban, felt like they could have done more with him. <clears throat> Nightcrawler, maybe if uh, Alan Cummings didn't flat out nail that character in the first iteration, make a personality, effects. And Nicholas Holt, I, he does a good job as Beast. I just I don't dig him that much in the role. So the the main characters when it comes to Shabab, I thought they did a really good job. So the secondary characters were good. They weren't really great, and I'm comparing that versus the Avengers team that's been around for a tremendous amount of time when it comes to how long they've actually been a group. <clears throat> okay, now we're coming down to story. Superman versus Batman, continuation of Man of Steel, where it's like, the, the story's good. You know, it's got a lot of depth to it. Surprisingly a lot of depth, given the... You have the, you have the the political nature of, you know, Superman feels he doesn't belong, people hate him. Some people love him. They kind of push almost like that ultimate illegal immigrant bit, which is pretty solid. Captain America Civil War. It's two guys from different ideological backgrounds. That whole film is the basis of, is Superman good or bad? That's pretty much what it is. Are superheroes a good thing or a bad thing? If they're a bad thing, they require oversight. If they're a good thing, no oversight. In the most simplistic terms. Versus an individual who's thousands of years old, who's like, oh, the weak inherited the world? I gotta kill them all. And legitimately felt like a threat to the earth. Destroyed cities. Pretty easily. Could have, if he wanted to, had all the nukes launched directly back on the planet and been done. Which, of course, ironically was the plot line going on for Arrow this year. You know, I didn't really fear for the Earth that much for Superman vs. Batman. And I more or less feared for the principal characters. Everyone else just felt like they were there. Captain America Civil War, there's a whole list of principal characters. I didn't feel like any of them were in any bit of danger at all. X-Men Apocalypse. You know, there's a pretty good chance that lots of those characters were not going to make it. And the overall flow of the story was a bit clunky. 
but I can safely say I was super invested in that film the whole time. If I had to do a one, two, three, I would probably do X Men one, uh, Super Avengers, Batman two, Civil War three. Money. This is an easy one. Yeah, C Civil War made bank first week out. It's going to make a tremendous amount of money. X Men I think is going to end up with about eighty for the week, which not bad. Given the fact that I think we're hitting a point of, of definite supergirl fatigue, it being the fourth supergirl film this year. Now, I'm not going to go with the whole, and some people went, well, Civil War did less money because Superman versus Batman. I was like, no, not really. If people are getting those two confused, like, oh, well, it's a comic book film. A lot of people saw Avengers. A lot more people saw Avengers then saw Man of Steel. Man of Steel did well, didn't do Avengers film money. If people were to confuse all superhero films the same way, you would see, if Marvel does well, you would see that trending on to other films from different companies. But if Marvel does poorly, you can't then be like, oh, Superman or Batman did bad, so therefore, no, no. I, I'd probably say that most people are probably a little bit smarter to realize that these are all different companies. Otherwise, let's be honest, if people thought they were all the same thing, there's a film called, phrase called comic book films, we would have seen Avengers vs. Justice League by now. We would have seen Justice League vs. X-Men. X-Men vs. Avengers. There would have been a story where, Reed, can you figure it out? No. Do -do -do. Wayne Residence. Yeah, it's Bruce there. Hey, Bruce, Reed, how's it going? I got a problem. You're a great detective. Yeah. I need you to find some people for me. Help me figure stuff out. Great. Oh, wait a minute. Come, let's go. Beep. Tony, what's up? I got Reed on the phone. Tony, this is Reed. I have Bruce on the phone. What's up, Tony? Hey, Bruce, how you doing? Pretty good. All right. They actually would have worked together to do something. I'm pretty sure people kind of realized that there are three independent franchises. Captain America didn't do as much money as people thought that it should have done, primarily because, we need to be honest, Avengers 2 wasn't very good. Now, as good as the first Avengers, better than most ones, but Marvel set the bar kind of high. Their hype machine is going overboard. You know, they're going to make money, not as much as people think they should make, so it'll be a disappointment. But it still made tremendous more money than even these two films will do. All right, music, personal choice. X Men Apocalypse did a great job of taking epic score films, epic, epic, epic films, epic scores for a film, and 80s music. Perfect. How many times did I bought the soundtrack? What was on there? You know, some some great Baroque style classic classic pieces, and Sweet Dreams. Finally, close to the comic. We already know Civil War could not be close to the comic because Marvel doesn't own the rights to all those characters. X-Men Apocalypse, I couldn't think of a direct X-Men comic. It felt very much like, I think it was, uh, I want to say X-Men Evolution, where they introduced the Apocalypse character. It was towards the end of one of the seasons that they to my knowledge, they didn't actually finish the story arc. But he started acquiring really, really powerful mutants. So it actually felt closer to a cartoon. And on the other side, I've got a combination of Frank Miller work and Death Superman. So it actually was very close to the comics. So if you're looking at the way these are laid out, from my personal opinion, I think X-Men Apocalypse did a really, really solid job. I thought it hit a lot of great marks. The problem is, I think that some people have gotten so accustomed to the Marvel way of doing films, where it's like, and here's some snappy one-liners, keeping everything poppy and fresh. And straight DC is very somber, serious in tone. This is how we're going to do things. And Fox is kind of trying to ride the line where it's like, you know, Maybe throw in a funny-ish sort of moment in this film. 
you want to throw in some moments of, of levity, but they're only throwing in them because the situation is so is so grave and so to the point. And I think it's the pocket actually did a really good job with it. Now I know I'm gonna hear it in the comments, like Civil War is the greatest superhero film ever created. Or the greatest film ever created. I, I've read both of those ones and it's like, yeah. I almost fell asleep during Civil War. It really wasn't until they hit that moment of, of the airplane soon they're like, oh. Oh, so here's fine doing something now. Instead of just being like, hi, disposable character. Oh no, your dad died. Yeah. I'm Black Panther now. So any any background? No, no, okay. Nothing. We don't. No. You just, okay. You you've. So you're. Essentially, if we didn't get the rights of Spider-Man, you would have been brought in as like the Spider-Man character, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. With your nondescript powers that are essentially Spider-Man, just better fighting, less smart quips. Where with X-Men Apocalypse, good job of saying, here's a character, here's a little background. Character, a little bit of background. So at least you knew who the character was, you understand what the character's motivation was, at least at least enough to be like, you know what? Mystique, you're the source of inspiration, you're the reason why they're going to go essentially battle a god, because there's nobody else around to do it. And you're going to be scared. You're going to work with that fear. And then it finally came down to what they ended up doing. Was like, all right, here we go. This is your moment to shine, Gene. We're gonna make, we're gonna bring you out as one of the most powerful characters, and we're gonna do a really good job with it. We're going to lead into this character could easily become uh, Famke or Famik Johnson later on, when a moment of true sacrifice was needed, and a similar event happened. So, comment section below. Go ahead. I'll probably get lit up with lots of dislikes because I decided to buck the trend and not give in to how amazing Marvel is.